and welcome to another edition of Maximum Growth Live. I'm one of your hosts, Jay Ruane, CEO of FirmFlex, your social media marketing agency for lawyers, as well as managing partner of Ruane Attorneys, a civil rights and criminal defense firm here in Connecticut. With me, as always, down there in D.C., my man, Seth Price. Seth is one of the founders of Price Benowitz, D.C., Maryland, South Carolina, Virginia, and uh, all soon to be dominating the East Coast, uh, as well as the um, uh, founder I guess as well of Blue Shark Digital, SEO for law firms, uh, one of my vendors that I use. Uh, so as always, Seth, how's your week going? It's going well. Uh, challenges, uh, the cold of not like having spent last winter in Florida, really enjoyed it. Invigorated me. I am finding the cold is getting me down, and it's not. Yeah, you. I you know especially I, I, I'm a social person. I, I like can't it. visit people because of COVID. It's cold. I'm stuck inside. The kids are annoying. You know, it's 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 uh, you know, I, I I'm part of me like I really enjoy the the Zoom world where I could be sitting somewhere else and uh, you know I, I got to figure out lifestyle wise is there a way to make it so that you you can you don't need to be freezing but with kids in school it makes it hard. Yeah, I did. You know, it's funny. I was talking to somebody yesterday and they're like, so what's your plan? Where are you going? And I said, well, I'm stuck here for another 12 years or 11 years, you know, with my kids, my, my, my youngest in kindergarten. I said, I'm not going anywhere, but I got to figure out a way. Cause I tell you right now, I used to love the cold. I, I can't stand it. I mean, and I'm going, I'm going, my plan is to go skiing, take the kids up to Vermont to the place I bought pre COVID that I haven't been able to be back to, uh, since then. And, uh, they're talking about a high of zero and a low of negative 27 on the mountain. And I'm thinking, I'm not going skiing in that. Hell, I'm not even getting in the hot tub uh, when it's that cold. So well, I'll tell uh, you, this is my this is my goal. And I see other friends of ours in this in our extended circle doing some travel with family. Uh, it's a long way to wait. But, you know, when the when the boys are in high, out of high school and they're in college, there's going to be a moment where we have one kid at home which for you, it seems like, you know, what can't it? <laughs> it's you forever know, away. And, and she won't be in high school. Now, she's probably going to have so, such a social circle that she won't go for this. But I would like nothing better than to travel for a year, you know, let the kids go to college, let, you know, because so getting them out of high school, not easy, but figuring something out where you uh, can really uh, pull a Lee Rosen and, and travel the world. Yeah, I mean, that would that would be fantastic. Um, it is a long, long way off for me, but that's the life that I've chosen. I'm, st I'm sort of stuck with it, but I do like the idea of being able to travel. And I think that opens up something to kids. And that's one of the reasons why we all want to grow our firms and, and sort of live the life that you've imagined. And this is something that I'm going to tease uh, because I'm in therapy, I guess, uh, with, with uh, I'm talking to somebody about it, but I'm at a point now where I've almost sort of achieved my vision. and. I don't know where to go next. And so I, I'm going to be working on that. And I'm going to be very vocal about it and, and, and bear my soul here over the next uh, couple of months as we, as I work on figuring out what's the next vision for me, because I, uh, you know, I'm stuck at home. So it's not like I can travel, uh, but I'm, I'm not marginalized, but I'm, I'm, I'm working my way out of the business. Uh, and so uh, it, it's, it's, it's going to be a challenging time for me, but one of the things that comes up quite frequently, and in my firm of 14 lawyers, uh, and I'm sure in your firm, um, is the idea of lawyers referring each other business. Uh, and, you know, I've got, I've got to think about that as something that matters. You know, we had a, we had a case essentially fall through our fingertips recently where uh, it was a bad stop and the case got dismissed uh, after some good lawyering by one of my lawyers that works up at the other end of the state. Uh, and he didn't think to refer that case to our civil rights lawyer in our office. Client went out on their own and hired somebody who's now got a very viable civil rights case for the bad stop. And I want to know how you guys at a firm like Price Benowitz that's got the trust in the states and the criminal and, and the family law, how are you guys handling it and how do you incentivize it? Well, look, this is, so we're, my fundamental business principle we talked about before on the show is a 25, 25, 50 setup for the non-PI world. And the idea being that if you have a criminal lawyer or 
family law lawyer, in theory, you can pay 25 cents on the dollar for origination, 25 cents on the dollar for the work done, 50% if they do both, which is very aggressive, but with volume, it works. And that's actually something I struggle with because my deal works well when people are doing something, which I would call breaking their base. When they're doing numbers beyond whatever their draws that we give them. And as they get to numbers that approach 500,000 a year, like 40 a month is what I'm finding, these numbers work well. Because even if they take a handful of cases at 50 cents a dollar, even with support, that's not as profitable, but it works nicely and it retains people. We have like a dozen people that are approaching or at or above 10 years. I mean, and they would not be with us. These are senior badass lawyers would not be staying with us for that type of tenure if it was not economically in their best interest, at the same time worrying about margin. So to me, I, I have the economic piece in there where in theory and on PI, it's even better because there you have a third to play with in our market. That's sort of how people look at it so that we can bonus and we can really incentivize people on it. But I'm really, you know, look, there. I am torn in the sense that I would expect, and this is true for everybody. There's nobody out there says, oh my God, my firms do amazing. I shouldn't say that. There's some people that I think do really well with staff and getting staff to get cases, but I have not been able to get that philosophy pushed down where it's part of the culture. And again, I hear stories of firms that do it, particularly PI firms, where it's an expectation, it's part of it. But I, I've seen stuff as hard over the years. I had a moment where my intake team, one of the co-managers of the team thought that asking for reviews was slimy, which meant all of a sudden nothing happened. So if you have lawyers that are used to going out and pounding the pavement and going to happy hours. One of our few lawyers that does this asked me to sponsor his college happy hour the other night. It was $500. It was the night, the, the earlier in the evening of one of our office parties. And, and I said, sure. And he goes out and he brings, so like you and I do that, right? You, you can't not go to a hockey game and take a shot right. at bringing something back. The question is, what is there any way to scale? Incentives are one thing, but I think this is beyond money, making it part of the firm DNA. Yeah, you know, this is a this is a real challenge. It's been a challenge for me. I mean, I have lamented to you over the years and often said uh, to pretty much anybody that listened that it's almost impossible to get associates to do that type of stuff, like generating business. And I think it comes down to really sort of it's it's going to be in the person or it's not like you know sort of the whole you know you can't teach hungry like morgan said um and, and but i think there's some things that you can do to sort of make it um make it part of the person that you are recruiting number one uh and 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 so you i think maybe you can start talking about some of those things in your job postings where you talk about how this is the kind of job where you're going to, you know, you're, we're going to be asking you to yeah, go yeah, out and well, do this look, type and of I, I, and, and, I, there's, and there's a lot of lawyers that will say, yeah, I'm not applying for that job because I won't do that. Yeah, hold on, time out. Okay, look, I know we're in one of our next topics is talking about how to put an right. ad that gets the right people in and retention and all that. Right. But look, when we want to find a lawyer, we're so freaking desperate to find somebody who substantively yeah. knows what they're doing, isn't going to steal from you, hasn't jumped jobs three times, has good, I mean, there are so many pieces. That's why I've always looked back and some of the um, sort of people who spoke from stage and talked about having for a resume, for, for a job, have a resume, they fill out, they sing, type something single space, they put in a pink envelope, they FedEx it to you. I'm like, yeah, there's, a, there's one story of that happening once. I can't even okay. find somebody with a massive thing. Are you saying, no, because you do it this way, you're getting a different type? So I, I'm, I'm sure- No, I, I, I'm with, with you. I think, I think those you know, pink envelopes, FedEx, no, not using DHL, I think thing. that's this crap. Is, this is part of it, which is, we can say it's part of our culture. Look, you could say that we care about mental health. You could say these different things, but I also am cynical because I go back to my, I relate much of my business to dating. I talk about it in-house, whether it's in sales. Or Which is amazing because you you basically had one girlfriend your whole life and married. Well, uh, you know, I got married pretty late to be fair, but so I, I had enough bad dates before, before I, I got married. But that, you know, it's sort of like in sales. You don't ask somebody to marry you at the first day at the bar. You, you, you take them out for dinner. You create a relationship. There are multiple touches. 
and that the more you do that, the more of a relationship you have. <clears throat> there are a thousand different times a day at work where I use the dating analogy. And so I'm sitting there where if you look at every, I was a J-date person. You may have been a match or some other one back in the I day. was match. In fact, after you're done, I'm going to tell you one of my worst match stories. Well, I got plenty of bad, bad J-date. One of them cried about rent control. And like, I, I've had, I've had a bunch of bad ones. But the thing about it was if you read everybody's profile, this is before you just swipe, we're old. Like right? right now I, po I posted the other day on, uh, on Facebook how my kids had never heard of MTV when I was playing uh, Video Kill the Radio Star. So my mind is sort of blown, but in every profile, every woman that I was selected loved, her family was everything to her and they loved to travel. And then when I got on my date back in the Manhattan back in the day, they hated everybody in their family and they never left their Manhattan apartment. So, you know, <laughs> it, like we say things we, like, and to me, that's why I sort of, you can talk about these things in an ad, but it really is the cultural DNA that matters. And, and yes, you can't teach hungry. I get that, but I don't need hungry. I would just like somebody who is at least thinking in that direction. You know, I, on our annual, I did a state of state meeting for the whole firm. It was great. And I said, Hey, once or twice a month, throw something business into a social media post. I say it. Do you think anybody's actually going to do it? Maybe, no, but I don't. If, if the idea is, is there like, you're a very like lovable, so great, you know, sort of epicenter of a firm. Are there things that we can do? It part of it was when back in person, you could at least go in glad hand and slap people. That half the people aren't in the office anymore. More than half, two thirds. Right. So what can you do? And I think again, this dovetails to our next conversation about the DNA of a firm and how do you make it special for somebody who wants to stay? When somebody wants to stay, in theory, they're out there advocating for people to come in versus a job where I want to get through the day and get my paycheck. Right. So this is really interesting. Okay. So um, I'm going to give you my answer and then I'll tell you about one of my match horror stories. Um, so there's a little tease for everybody that's out there that's watching or listening. Um, so I, I thought, you know, gamification is huge. And if I make it a game, then I'm going to, and I tie their financial rewards to this game, people will apply themselves. And so, I don't know, like five or six years ago, I created this rubric, this spreadsheet where, you know, if you published an article in a local uh, magazine- I remember, I think we had a show about this or some precursor yeah, I, to I mean, we definitely talked about it. Um, if you, you know, if you sent out note cards uh, to referral sources, everything you could get points. And the minute you hit a hundred points, you got a guaranteed raise, uh, you know? And so it was set up so that, you can make a 12% a year raise, which is really unheard of, um, you know, in, in the most part. And everyone said, oh, this is great. I'm going to do it. And then, you know, they each accomplished like five or seven points. And, and, then and you, it was, and you they did it the first day. And I was, and I was like, I hit my hundred in three weeks. Where are you guys at? And I was like, and, and I just realized I'm naturally going to do all these things. And they are not. It's just well, not and, in their personality, right. which is why I'm a, my name's on the firm door and their names aren't. And, and Andrew Finkelstein would tell us to shut up and just advertise more, bring the cases in and let them do their freaking work. They'll bring in what they bring in, but they're not going to be motivated beyond it. That right. would be his genius. You know, uh, um, I look, I'm guilty of this. We had a contest. I don't think, I think the people looked at it and saw it as bullshit and we never looked at it enough to show that they were, act, which meant they were actually right. Like, hey, whoever does the most things in this category gets a trip. It was sitting on our freaking website, you know, and like, we're sitting there where we're not, like, we're not even following up on it, but it's so demoralizing because it's just not happening. You know, there's one-on-one -on -one mentoring, but then you're sort of like, you're the commodity. You know, I almost wish there right. was a SaaS based, like the 15 fives of, business development where somebody could like do touches on reminding you hey have you tried this today we may just have hey our next, um, we may have our next thing you know we could turn that into finalize and and say hey what did you do today that, that might be something that today, we should look like, into on on this or, or you can do we, this today right do how this, can this you, day like and it's like because look as that original finalized that when I, when I tested it, it just got annoying in my text messages. Cause it was like, right. I, you know, I either did it or didn't do it or whatever, but the idea being, if there is some way that it became accountability, 
I was talking to somebody about coaches. I, I really, with this cold weather and with real things at Blue Shark, very, very well systematized and filing a, a person, I have more breathing room. And now I'm sort of like, now I need like the motivation. I know that's crazy, but like I'm sitting there without some of that stuff. I want to let people do their job and not get into the weeds. So I'm struggling with that, but it's almost like, I think that what we're seeing here is unless there is a system, I wonder why you good guy to talk to you about this. How can we even pretend to motivate and remind like this week that you get, we don't take Ubers as much as we did a few months ago, we were a couple of years ago, but like, what are the touch points? How like not the handing out business cards is the be all and end all. What, when you do that, it triggers something in your mind. Oh, that's business development. Oh, maybe. And it, and it rather than I'm just getting through the day to feed my kids and get back to work. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's a real challenge. It's a real challenge. I know a lot of people in our profession think of, well, I made it through the marathon of law school. Now I'm done. And now the work will just come to me because for a lot of them, that's, they, they never gave any thought to developing business. Obviously all of us that are part of this show and, and listening are the types of people who are like, I got to go out and find business. Um, and so you know, it's, it's a real challenge. I mean, it, I, I don't know any other way to say it, but it's, it's probably one of the ultimate challenges we have. Uh, or, do we just shut, or do we just shut up and say, yes, we should be doing this, but you know what? Just, you know, I some of my cynical West coast friends, just buy your freaking cases, get the pipeline yeah. there and support it. It just seems that I, I built a multidisciplinary firm. It's just insane. And, you know, then I'll, I'm going to be very clear. I have one practice area, which is not as profitable as the others. And I'm sitting there with a person in that group saying, hey, hey, me, I want my attention with the group. I'm like, there's not enough money to be interesting in this. And yet I want to be able to cross refer because it's the right thing to do. But if you only have limited bandwidth, you can't think of somebody as everything you know, you've talked a lot of times about, you know, over expansion versus not. And, you know, we've made some, we've called the the herd to a certain extent, right? We talked about how I passed off a, an immigration practice earlier this year. Then the question is, okay, now, now what are our thoughts? What can we do that? Is it further culling, you know, in that if you, if you reduce your skews? Well, let, 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 let's talk about this in, in terms of the next topic that I want to talk about is should you be recruiting with that mindset and actually putting up ads saying, lawyers, this is a job in a law firm. You will not be expected to do any business development. You will not be expected to do this, that, and the other thing. And tell them, say, this is the ceiling of what you'll earn. This is your hours. This is what your here's your KPIs that we'll measure you against. And if this appeals to you, which it could have, I mean, see, here's one of the challenges that I think you and I have, a lot of people who listen to us in our audience have, is that we are the weirdos, right? Like we are not your standard person. We're not your standard lawyer. We have a much, much higher risk tolerance. I mean, huge risk tolerance compared to 99% of the world and like 99.9% .9 of other lawyers. Um, we are the kind of people who would be out there meeting people, greeting people, networking, doing all those things when you've given that opportunity, whereas other people are like, I'm just gonna go home. I'm, I wanna go sit on my couch and, you know, and, and watch something on Netflix. So we have to, it's, it's almost like we have this cognitive bias. And so maybe what we need to do is take a step back um, and, and think about what we are offering and who we are attracting. Because you and I, I mean, if I came in to interview with your firm for a criminal lawyer position, you would probably be like, oh, I'm gonna hire this guy. He wants to go out, he wants to be aggressive. He, you know, he likes to talk, but I wouldn't necessarily be the best for getting the work done in your office. You know, no, I know mean, I'm a big well, That's why I'm particularly proud of our non-PI model in that it gives you, let's say you did come, I think I can have the best of all worlds because you you are going to get your work done. And if you do that at 50 cents in the dollar, your margin is pretty good compared to if you put your own yeah. shingle out, right? And then you get all the work we give you. So I, I 
to me, I get it. And we, we actually recruit for, if you're not going to deliver a single piece of business, fine. If you deliver a couple cases a month, a couple, enough, enough that you'd be starving on your own, we can make you a lot of money because we have the stuff we give you plus a little bit of your own gets you to numbers you really like. If anything, our issues come out when people do zero on their own because over time they don't get, they're not satisfied. And as a final thought on this, the added complication, look at you and me. We've now known each other about 15 years or so. How many times have we shifted marriage, kids, you know, desire? Like now it's cold. I'd rather be in Florida. Like that wasn't me when you first met me. I was grinding, right? And so right. the thought being, it's not just when you get somebody, but does that, does that change? Does the person go from, oh, I'm pregnant now, my outlook changed? Or does it look from, oh, I'm getting divorced, now I really need to make money? Or, you know, or whatever it is, things keep changing in people's own beings. And so we're supposed to not only hire for today, but anticipate where it's going. That becomes just, you know, an unfathomable complication, which is why it's very, you can, you can do your best, but it's certainly when I'm looking at it to make money in years two, three, four, it, I think it comes down to what you hear a lot on Shark Tank. You're getting the person. If that person is yeah. great, whether they're, whether they're a little bit more motivated, a little less motivated, whatever it is, you'll be fine. It's, it, is this the bones of the person who's going to do right by you? Yeah. And, and talking about the person is something that I want to talk about in our next topic, because Ryan McKean posted something in one of the forums um, about the uh, Georgetown Legal Profession University Law Center report that they did with Thompson uh, about the report on the state of the legal market. And it was interesting uh, because they say that, you know, 25 percent of all law firms were at risk of losing their associates back in November. Of course, they're probably talking about big law. They're not necessarily talking about people in our our positions, um, but we're, we're still at risk of losing people. Um, oh, and, and staff even greater, I would argue. St staff, for sure, for sure. Um, and you know- well, So basically um, this is their way of taking the great resignation and, and, and trying to get some clickbait out of it. You know, it, it's legitimately, it's a thing, right? Can't, can't put right. sugarcoat it. We're doing both inflation, plus the mental health issues associated with COVID have led to a, you know, a, a dumpster fire of, uh, of firm management. Right. And, and one of the things that they say as a result of this survey that they did was that basically you cannot buy loyalty that, um, you know, even if you just throw money at the associates, at some point, they're going to say, this isn't worth it anymore. And that may be because they got to spend a year and a half at home. And so they say, you know, I can still yeah. get m my work done. Why, you know, and, and be able to be home at five o'clock to, to have dinner with my kids oh. every night. Why am I not able to do that working in the office? And so oh. what are the things that I have been contemplating is going in and sort of changing all of my job descriptions for when we do recruit and say, we, we practice what we preach. We want you to have dinner with your kids. We, you know, we know well, full well. Cares that gonna, who cares if it's in your description? It's how you live. Look, I'm going to get real. No, real. I know I'm it's get how very... you live, but but I think but I think you need to describe it because not every other firm is describing it that way, well, and it can help you attract talent. Oh, great! No, look, a thousand percent, right? right? What you're saying, gold, and look, it's it's also true. If we hire people and say you must be in the office five days a week, they may tell you that, but th within a week they're not going to be. Right. Meaning right. I, I hired an, my amazing firm administrator. She's awesome. She's like commutes way too long for, for her own good. She, to her credit, said I'll be there every day through the end of the year. She was, you know, snow, COVID and some personal issues. Next thing you know, it's and again, I'm fine with it. She is did what she did to be able to work remote and we are good with it. I'll give you the flip side, being very raw and the negative, right? So that's a success story. We brought somebody in, we stretched, we both sort of like looked past. I knew that she couldn't really be there every day with that type of commute, but I knew she was good enough that she would be fine from a distance with, with whatever reasonable amount in the office is. So we have, I have a one-off practice. I don't want to get too specific, but it's a one-off practice with one attorney. Our attorney turnover is extremely low with one person who's the managing of, of attorneys. Now, they will tell you on, a, we just had a, a regular call that they were in a position that they tell everybody, go home, don't work so hard. This person kills themselves. No argument. They make a lot of money. It's one of the highest grossing single lawyers out there that you're going to meet. If you saw numbers, you'd be like, oh my God. 
But nobody else wants to work alongside that. Not only is it required to be in the office, there's no virtual for this particular lawyer. So they don't work in our main office, but we have now burnt through people. Now, each one is a story. Somebody else went off to an association. Another guy went back to the government. It wasn't like people stayed in that. But after a while, you're like exactly what you're talking about. And this person, if you if you interviewed her and said, hey, what's going on? It's like, I'm telling people to go home. I don't know why they're not. Bullshit, right? It's, it's, it's one thing to change your job description. It's another to change your core culture. Yeah. At Price Benno, it's the main office, like in our PI department, people do what they need to do. There are people, there's one guy who shows up every day because he likes it. There's another guy who I thought was going to show up every day. I've seen him three times. He's the one who brings in the most business of anybody, probably because he's not commuting to the office and he spends that after work time networking. You know, so pick your poison. But I, I, I always go with job description. Yeah, great. It, it needs to be done. And I don't want to like, that's why you're Mr. Systems and it's the right, right way to do it. But I would say, I don't really care what it says in there. The question is, what is Jay right. Ruin's expectation? And is anybody giving you an odd look if you leave at 5.30 to get home? Well, you know, so that this really brings up a good point. And, and, you know, I'm taking some time away from the office this month, not being in at all, still obviously keeping knowing what's going on. But I've come to the realization that I have to take away from my lawyers the concept of unlimited vacation. because because it's unlimited, they just don't take it. And they're not taking it. And so uh, I've got I've got a couple of people that, you know, have not taken time off in two years. Well, hold on, that's uh, not you know, unlimited. Uh, I, I, look, I call bullshit each way. The unlimited concept is, is bad both ways. Bad if they don't take it, it's right. bad if they take it, right? So it sounds like a talking point, but it, it's- but I, But I wanna force them to say, hey, look, you need to take time away from the office. It'll be better for both of us. Right. And, you know, I'm I'm booking you here. I'm, I'm for one of the guys. I'm going to book him a vacation. I'm going to say we booked It's one more thing. Like we have so much stuff. We have compliance here. We have compliance right. there. We have hiring. We have keeping people. Up. And now all of a sudden, you now need literally. And you're right. You're not wrong. But it's just another overhead expense added to yeah. everything else, where you literally need to take keep track of vacation, not for their fact that they're taking too much, but they're taking too little. Right. Now, one way to do yep. that is, is to one way to do that is not to have rollover because that is the one thing. And I'm not saying that we don't, but by not rolling over vacation, it forces the conversation. Now, I got to be careful that you don't make an exception that gets you into trouble with a lawsuit, meaning you're not treating people equally. But to me, that's one of the great fail safes where people are like, oh, my God, I'm like, OK, as long as you book it now, we'll honor it. But you if you otherwise you really you're going to have a you know how do you keep track of that it's so because people also take time off but very often it's like a day here or there for their kids versus a real meaningful vacation to recharge right right and 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 so this is this is something that we're grappling with now and i'm trying to get to a point where we can have a workable program uh because you know what we were seeing unfortunately when we had a defined vacation schedule especially when it came to the staff was, well, I know I got three weeks vacation. I didn't take it. Just pay me an extra week at the end of the year. Uh, you know, and, 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 and I, I don't like doing that. I don't like just having, you know, I, I'd rather than take the vacation and not come to, you know, the last week of the year. I find it harder I, in I, our I, world. I mean, it's harder in our world. It's impossible in the PI world. I love the idea and I've seen this in the digital space of closing Christmas to New Year's. Yeah. Where it's just part of the ethos. It's just really tough as a law firm to do that, if not impossible. Um, but that was it. Would, I'll tell you right now, I would have lost a ton of money this year because the last two weeks of December were great. Right. So I don't know. Maybe it's finding that money that month in the summer in a criminal shop when all the when all the cops are on vacation. And, and like, you know, you know, like look the last five years, what's that slow month? And just basically say, hey, we're going to have a skeleton staff on. We'll answer the phones and we'll just make sure we don't. But I don't know. But the question is, and I think it comes down to this piece, which the Ryan sort of sparked this ABA paper, which is, hey, we're not the same unit before we had three floors downtown by the nicest restaurants. You, If I wanted to give somebody a treat, I took them to Rasika, the nicest Indian restaurant. Jose Andreas has three restaurants on the block. I could really make this a special occasion to come down. People are like, 
it, the places are depressing. Nobody wants to eat inside. It's freezing outside. So what are you left with? How do you keep that core? Again, we talked about 15.5. We were talking about different economic incentives. There are things you can do, but it's, you know, we did, we both did the, you know, do these state of the firm things, but how do you create stickiness? Because you say it's not about the money, but as the different accoutrements disappear, like being downtown and having a nice lunch and being able to go to a game after work, as those things spin off, you do become a creature of money, assuming that you're not forcing people to a job they don't want to be at because they want to work remotely. And you're not giving them flexibility, but that's so that that's one huge thing is flexibility. But I think what's happening is money becomes a factor. I don't know if you saw the news just got, came out the other day about uh, inflation. I don't some crazy number seven percent seven percent, and that that's you know in what period of time, you know it's. It is crazy what's going on with costs right now. I mean, like I'm my grandfather now about what things cost and the fact that like a, a burger is now closer to 20 than it is to 10 is just insane. Um, but the idea that our, our staff is getting squeezed and that I've already seen this with intake. Part of what we talked about the international recruitment was we, we had this issue where it, it, I physically wasn't keeping up with domestic salaries, partially my fault, but partially getting to numbers that are just especially with overtime. So it's one thing to say, hey, I'm now paying somebody $55,000 a year, but we're now approaching the numbers that overtime wasn't intended to apply to. We're now right. at man, like fast food managers that run restaurants are at 55, 60 as of a couple of years ago. I know those numbers are going up, but we're like, it's, it's equating to the new normal and figuring out how do you keep people happy and motivated? And I think it's a little bit of everything, right? You know, if you don't have your numbers competitive, you may hold on for a little bit, but it's not going to be for long. Right. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's a challenge as you're growing your firm. And that's really, you know, part and parcel of why we do the show is to, is to sort of talk through these issues that both you and I are facing and talk through the solutions that we find. Sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're different. Uh, and, and that's what we want to share with our audience because we want to make sure that they are aware of it because, you know, one of the biggest challenges as you grow, as you scale, as you go from, you know, none to one, one to 10, 10 to 20, and, and so on, and then you, you know, up to 80, 80 plus people, um, you know, the, the problems are more complicated. They're, they're, they're challenging in their own way. Uh, and, and if you don't approach them rationally, uh, you know, the decisions that you would have made, you know, I, I know I can't, I, can, I can't speak for you, I can speak for myself. I made decisions when I was a staff of 20 um, using the knowledge when I was a staff of five and I made mistakes and I've learned well, from those I, mistakes I, I, and I don't want, I don't want people to make those mistakes. That's what we're all about. You know, well, things, I, want to I, have, that, I, have a, I have a simple piece of advice that I think will save people a lot of headaches down the road. We started way, way back with 26 paychecks a year, every two weeks, staff liked it. If we had just started and we are now moving to it, finally, Blue Shark moved to it, but price bet was finally in February after January will be three paychecks every two weeks. We are finally, God willing, future tense, going to go to 24 paychecks a year, two per month, infinitely better for budgeting. Those two paychecks a year, two times a year when you have three pay payrolls, just what a cluster. So I know that people like to be able to budget certain ways, but if I had my way to go back, so you're talking about if I wish I knew now, as people are starting their firm, they have limited payroll, it affect one or two people, you throw them a couple hundred dollars, get yourself to 24 twice a month, not every two weeks, 26. This is where you and I disagree. I pay every week. Well, I you want to do week. that, God bless, it, it, God bless. It's, yeah. it's a different, different beast. It's, uh, but you know, I, I came from the bar business. You work this week, you got paid this week. And uh, if I got to cut you, I got to cut you. That's just the way life goes. I will continue to stay with 52 pay periods uh, a year because well, it I mean, helps I guess me. it's not as dramatic on the weekly. What I don't like is I want to be able to see my numbers more clearly. And I and, and I like the ability to see month after month and not see months that are way out. It comes, it comes out in the end annually. But when you're looking at monthly budgeting, um, again, for you, the most you could be off is by essentially – um, a half week, which is not the end of the right. world. But for me, I have two pay periods a year 
where we are looking at um, basically a, a huge Way off. difference in expense. Huge nut. And yeah. it, it gets ugly. And then you, you want to make good decisions. And the other months are under. So you're, you're not, you know, and it's, so again, God bless you for your way. I've never heard of another firm does it this way, but it works for you and you're happy and it's fine. What I'm telling you is like with, with the, the over time, the, the ability to get that dialed in. And I, and I would say, if it's, if I were doing that, I would, to, for me, I would go again to 48 pay periods, if I'm doing this right per year, where you're not paying on a week where it's like you get four per month because from budgeting for the employee, they have rent and everything else. And you may be at the point where you're giving people now, if it's that immediate, you have less issues, but I like the idea that they pay their bills monthly, make sure that money is there monthly. It's the change that's so painful. Yeah, I, I mean, I can remember going, uh, you know, when we switched over to our payroll provider and we had to go to, we used to be, you work this week, you got paid on Friday for this week. Yeah, uh, and, I remember and, that and, very early on talking yeah, about Yeah, very, yeah. And then how, we how went to one, one that? week, a bunch of times. And then we went to one week in arrears. Uh, and that's where we stayed for a couple of years. And, and it, it seems to work for us. Um, you know, I'm constantly looking at my numbers and, and it allows me to know where I'm going to be pretty much every week. And it makes it very easy for me to give my sales team, Hey, this is your goal. You know, this is what our payroll and our expenses are going to be for the week. Uh, and so this is the goal. And so we can, you know, when we, ha we know where we're at, uh, and basically I have a, a, a spreadsheet where this is what we need to earn. And you can see either we're above you know or we're below that number. But to me, um, I, I, we got to go, but I'll, I'll leave, I don't know if you're negative, but I'll give you the opposite side of this. Because a lot of my friends are in criminal firms and a buddy in Philly that did this. And his price, he's a one guy shop, right? His pricing would change based on how he was feeling about his week. And to oh, me, no, no, we don't no, do no, that. no, no, I know. But that the idea of looking at it on a weekly basis to me, it, 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 it again, it works for you. I, I, I just there are things that work for you. I just ask you, I challenge you to think: Is that too myopic? Are you looking at too small of a sample size, rewarding people for micro behavior? Where, yeah, great, we had a great week, but that's because they bear, they they front end loaded the stuff from another week, and I just it, it just gets dubious. Oh, I, there, there's downsides to everything, but that's what really Absolutely. what it's all about. It's finding the one that works for you and, and, and your your amount of risk tolerance and, and that type of thing. Uh, let's, when let's, you're, uh, when you're let's, let's call this a week. All right. So, folks, that's going to be for us this week here on Maximum Growth Live. As always, if you want to follow us, please check out our podcast wherever you download podcasts. We are available. Of course, you can always check us out every week here live to 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays for our episode of Maximum Growth Live. If you want to keep up with Seth, please check him out as the Law Firm Insider. He's available on the Blue Shark YouTube page. And if you want to join me, we're almost up to 1,000 people. Please join my Systemizing Your Law Firm for Growth Facebook page. So for that, for us, we're going to be out of here. I'm going to hit the mountains uh, and, and try to do some skiing this weekend. Probably not going to do much because it's going to be bitter cold. Seth, you got anything fun planned for the weekend? I'm going to be in New York. Anybody's in New York, I'm taking my uh, son for his birthday to uh, the Caps Islander game at UBS. And Oh, uh, nice. Granted, uh, everybody, including my mom, has COVID. Uh, so oh, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, we'll wear our N95 masks and uh, try to stay safe. All right, folks. So stay safe, wear your masks, and we'll check you out next week. Bye for now.